Please stand and face the back of the church. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My friends, we gather on a very solemn occasion. Someone who has been an important part of this community, someone who has been an important part of this family has passed away. And all we are left with are memories and prayers. And one of the first memories that Claude would have had would have been his baptism. And on the day of his baptism, he was dressed in the white garments of salvation. And today we once again dress him in those same white garments of salvation. Today we greet the body of our brother and surround him with the church's prayer. We commend our brother to the mercy of God and pray that the promise made to him in baptism will indeed be fulfilled. And on the day of his baptism, the angel sang for joy and let us welcome him to our presence, singing those same songs of hope. I heard my mother say, I heard my mother say, I heard my mother say, Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. You can have all of this world. And give me. die and when I we gather on a very solemn occasion to remember and, and to pray. And so let us take a few moments to silently pray for Claude. O God, in whom, in whom sinners find mercy and saints find joy, we pray to you for our brother Claude, whose body we honor with Christian burial that he may be delivered from the bonds of death. Admit him to the joyful company of your saints and raise him on the last day to rejoice in your presence forever. We pray this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated. On days of sorrow, we often turn to the scriptures for support. And I invite Marcel to come forward and give us the first reading from Scripture. A reading from the book of Sirach. My child, when you come to serve the Lord, prepare yourself for testing. Set your heart right and be steadfast. And do not be impetuous in time of calamity, 
Cling to him and do not depart, so that your last days may be prosperous. Accept whatever befalls you. In times of humiliation, be patient. For gold is tested in the fire, and those found acceptable in the furnace of humiliation. Trust in him, and he will help you. Make your way straight and hope in him. You who fear the Lord, wait for his mercy. Do not stray or else you may fall. You who fear the Lord, trust in him and your reward will not be lost. You who fear the Lord, hope for good things, for lasting joy and mercy. Consider the generations of old and see, has anyone trusted in the Lord and been disappointed? Or has anyone persevered in the fear of the Lord, has been forsaken? Or has anyone called upon him and been neglected? For the Lord is compassionate and merciful. He forgives sins and saves in the time of distress. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Nothing more shall I want. He leads me along the path of right, according to his word. The Lord, he will be my shepherd. Nothing more shall I Johnny to come forward and give us the second reading from Scripture. (sighs) 
A reading from the book of Revelation. <clears throat> then I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and for the first earth has passed away, and the sea was no more. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I hear a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from every eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. The one who had, <coughs> the one who was seated at the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. During the supper he said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. I would like to take this opportunity to express my deepest condolences to you, Claude's family. I cannot imagine the roller coaster of emotions that, the, that you have experienced in these last few months. It wasn't that long ago that we came to bid farewell to Thomas. Then the joy of Advent, the ongoing struggle with COVID, Christmas plans being made and then broken. And now on top of all of this, the death of Claude. I can only imagine the sorrow in your hearts, and I wish that I could make it all go away, but I can't. I can only pray that God would send his comforting spirit upon you. Normally at this time of year, people are making their last minute preparations for Christmas. Who is going to cook what? When, when, when are we going to each other's homes? It's truly a season of joy as we celebrate the birth of our Savior. But as I reflect on Jesus' life, I see that it was not all joy. Soon after his birth, he became a refugee as Herod wanted to kill him. He spent the first few years of his life in a foreign country. He got lost from his parents when he was 12. He gathered together a ragtag team of disciples, 
one of whom betrayed him, one who denied him, and all who deserted him in his greatest time of need. Not to mention dying on a cross in complete humility, seemingly a failure. But through all of this suffering, the Father brought incomprehensible joy, resurrection, eternal life, What more can we look forward to? The problem is, Good Friday comes before Easter Sunday. We cannot experience the joy of the resurrection before, before going through the sorrow of the crucifixion. And this becomes very acute when we face the death of a loved one. Today we remember Claude's death, the sorrow of his passing and all the deaths that he encountered throughout his life, especially the death of his daughter. But we also remember the joyous times, the stories he told, whether they were true or not, and the joy he brought into a room with all of his jokes and humor. I remember shortly after the new cathedral was built in Saskatoon, Bishop Don Bolin giving the priests of both dioceses a tour, and he spoke with great reverence on the new stained glass windows, and more precisely on the scripture verse verse that they were based on. All five of the windows in the new cathedral are based on the line from that book of Revelation that we heard just a few moments ago. See, I am making all things new. He made a special point of saying the line is not I'm making all new things. He said, I'm making all things new. Four of the windows reflect aspects of Saskatchewan and the sacraments. However, the last window, the largest window, incorporates all the aspects of the other windows, but in a slightly different way. You can tell that they're the same, but different. Something has been made new. Not not unlike the many healings that Jesus would have made throughout his life. He didn't create new people. He made the blind, the lame, the mute, the possessed. He made them all new. The wonder of the resurrection is not that God will make all new people. The wonder of the resurrection is that God will make all things new. All those who have died, he will make new. And I don't know about you, but that gives me great hope, knowing that all of my sins will be wiped away, all of my shortcomings, all of my faults and failings, and I will be created anew as a perfect image of Jesus Christ. Truly at that moment, mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things will have passed away. I think of this, and I think of Claude. There's no question that he suffered greatly in this life, especially the death of of Keisha. And it would have been easy to focus on all of his faults and failings. But we can never forget that Jesus has the last word. There's a very interesting line in the first reading, for gold is tested in fire. And one of the ways in which the impurities are removed from gold is heating it in fire. And since gold is so heavy, all the impurities rise to the the surface and are scooped away. And all that is left with is pure gold. All of us have experienced this. We've all experienced something difficult, something painful. And through that experience, undergone a purification process and come out the other side stronger, healthier, and closer to Christ. Jesus understood this. He knew that the only way to salvation was through the cross. This is why he gathered his disciples to send them to the ends of the earth with the good news. And after three years of teaching them, he finally tells them, you know the way to the place where I am going. And it was Thomas who said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And I'm sure Jesus wanted to say, Hello, hello Thomas, anybody home? Thomas, where have you been for the last three years? 
Didn't you pay any attention to anything I said or did? Didn't you see me heal all the people? Weren't you there when I fed the hungry crowds? Don't you remember I raised the dead? I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Follow me, and when it comes time for you to pass from this life, I will raise you up again, make you new. In the second reading, just before Jesus says, I am making all things new, it is revealed that there will be a new heaven and a new earth. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. Now, thankfully, we've been given a glimpse of this new heaven and new earth. In just a few minutes, I'll be celebrating the Eucharist, and each and every one of us will be receiving the body of Christ. And in that celebration, in that action, in that brief moment, we will have entered into the gates of heaven, and we will be surrounded by all the saints in heaven. This is something that we profess every Sunday when we profess the creed. I believe in the communion of saints. And the saints are not people like St. Peter or St. Joseph or St. Teresa, all of the official saints of the church. The saints are all of those who have died and have been transformed by Christ, including your brother Claude. It's true. Never again will we see him. Never will we listen to one of his stories. Never again will we be, will we be able to ask him for help. Never again will we hear him strumming his guitar. And for this, we are truly sorry. But the flip side is, now we have one more person in the communion of saints. Now we have one more person gathered around the table of the Lord. Now we have one more person interceding on our behalf. And for this, we can be thankful. In a few days, we will be celebrating the birth of Jesus. And we will celebrate the birth of hope. In this time of joy, let us never forget that Jesus will be wiping away every tear from Claude's eyes, transforming him into a new person, and setting a place for him at his table. Let us hold fast to that hope, and let us hold fast to the hope that we will see him again. I would invite Alin and Gerald to come forward and lead us in prayer. We gather to remember and we gather to pray. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church, confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus. We join our prayer to his. The response to the sessions is, come, help us, Lord. Come, help us, Lord. That Jesus, who is our re resurrection and life, may give us peace to all for people forever. We pray to the Lord. Come, help us, Lord. For the vision to see God's love in our world, in spite of pain and suffering, separation and loss, we pray to the Lord. Come, help us, Lord. That God's faithful servant, Claude, may find eternal rest and lasting peace, we pray to the Lord. Come, help us, Lord. That all the faithful departed, Mom, Dad, Robert, Keisha, and Thomas, Enjoy the vision of God forever, we pray to the Lord. Come, help us, Lord. <clears throat> Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. 
Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours and the many sacrifices that Claude would have made throughout his life may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all this Holy Church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection is dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. indeed holy O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. 
broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. James, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this, sac may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Albert, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Claude, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. When from, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall become like you for all ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. My friends, we gather together because we believe that Jesus Christ is calling us. And so let us pray as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us bow to one another, a sign of God's peace. of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
I know your life On earth is trouble But only you know the pain You weren't afraid to face the devil we're no stranger to the rain For it's high on that mountain Sun, your work on earth is done Road to hell Love for the Father and the Son Oh, how we cry The day you left us Gathered round Your grave to grieve I wish I could see the angel faces when they hear your sweet voice. Let us pray. God of all faithfulness, in your wisdom you have called your servant out of this world. Release him from the bonds of sin and welcome him into your presence so that he may enjoy eternal light and eternal peace and be raised in glory with all your saints. We pray this through Christ, our Lord. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope, for one day we shall joyfully greet him again, when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. As a sign of respect for our brother, we let this incense rise to God, who has called him to share in his glory.
with the calm and the strife that brings us all unto the shore. Bathe him in your love. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died with Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you have bestowed upon him in this life, especially the blessing of his family. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us remain to comfort one another with the assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and, with, and are with you and with our brother forever and ever. Amen. Amen. My dear friends, may every mark of affection and every gesture of friendship that you give to one another, let it be a sign of God's peace for you. In peace and in the sure hope of the resurrection, we take leave of our brother knowing that one day we shall be see him again in heaven. Lord, now you serve. Street.